Hello everyone, this is Crota giving you a shoutcast in game 2 in a best of 3 series between Mondragon and Paranoid, both from NYM versus EG's Strife Curl and EG Axe Lab. And once again, it looks like we know um, we are going to be blessed with the conversation of Paranoid and Mondragon. This map is on Scorched Haven. <coughs> yes, one of the 2v2 maps that I actually know the name of. Um, but yes, the 2v2 games have been pretty interesting so far. Mondragon and Paranoid choosing a double Zerg strategy, which opens up to a lot of very, very aggressive Zergling Baneling play. We'll see what's going to be happening here as it looks like, yeah, Strife Crow quickly using that 11 over 10 extractor trick, trying to train up as quickly as possible. Perhaps he'll go for an 11 over 10 pool and then go into an Overlord. They perhaps learned a lot from their first game already, and we'll see what how this game will go down. We already have a pylon being warped in here, and then most likely we'll have gateways and a, a semi-decent wall being placed over here. Perhaps a gateway here per, with the Cybernex core making a very long, narrow walkway for Zella to be able to see, um, fight a lot of Zerglings one at a time. Now, Overlords are be, um, being moved out into position by both players, or three of the four players right now. As Mondragon um, apparently giving um, giving advice to um, Axlab, but Axlab instead going for a gateway first instead of a photon or a forge, and it doesn't look like there will be a very um, a very defensive style game, not a macro style game, but just a much earlier game or a, a lot of early game this time around. We can see that the extractor and spawning pool are nearing completion. Spawning pool about two thirds of the way done. Back over here, Paranoid opening up with that 14 pool that he mentioned earlier. About I'm halfway done now. Now, a lot of the things to be really careful about on a map like this, where you do not share um, a base and a, and a choke point, a ramp choke point, is to make sure that you have a way of getting units into your opponent's base. Um, a pylon being positioned over here would probably be one of the better options as Strife Crow now getting into a Roach Warren. And do we see any Zerglings making their way out? Six Zerglings now being trained up by Mondragon, so those um, Zerglings will be making their way out in just a moment. The Roach Warren is, what, 25 seconds or 35 seconds away from being completed. Completed. Axlav going to come in and sneak around with this pro, perhaps warping a pylon down over here where there is no creep. But first, stealing some minerals. Um, not quite sure why. That that's that's a really odd walk of shame. And now finally coming back around, deciding to steal some minerals first. And now you can see that the queen is going to be positioning itself over here in just a moment as Zerglings now making their way out across. We are going to have one zealot in position. And the Zealot should be able to hold off a lot of Zerglings here. So that's not going to be a problem. The problem is going to be the fact that the Sentry takes 37 seconds to build. And this um, Cybernetic Core will be very, very exposed. Zerglings now trying to make their way in. The Zealot is going to fight off a large number of them, taking down one of them rather easily. And now in come the Zerglings to try to um, get a lot of damage here. But only four Zerglings are able to attack at a time. As a Chrono Boost now forces another Sentry into play. The Sentry will pop out very quickly and now start to fight back. Perhaps push back against the rest of those Zerglings as the shields on the Cybernetic Squad have been destroyed. And Roaches are now engaging. So the Roaches are engaging in midfield. There is no Metabolic Boost just quite yet. That is going to be a bit of a problem as Strife Crow will be forced to hold on with those Roaches here. And try to make sure that those units do not come up that ramp. Meanwhile, Zerglings down over here. And, and Banelings now being hatched by Paranoid. So Paranoid... With what, six Banelings may be able to take this down six times 80, 480 damage. What, um, Banelings with a couple of Zerglings poking away over here. But the sentries are ready and in position to make sure that this Cybernetics Core does not go down. Perhaps a force field to prevent the Zerglings from being able to get any additional damage. Paranoid now moving around with those Banelings. Banelings are not on a roll. No movement speed upgrades at all as those Banelings are now trying to set up for a well-timed bust on this front door here. And oh, a nice force field preventing those units from being able to walk up that ramp. There's a lot of sentries being added. And now Axav needs to really hurry into a robotics bay and try to get those Colossus. Otherwise, those um, otherwise those Zerglings are just going to be able to rip through this gateway army, especially without any forges and without the level 1 weapons upgrade. Zerglings and Zerglings still wandering around still. More Banelings in the backfield. And you can see Roaches, double Roaches here. And I like this positioning by Strife Girl. What it's going to do 
is even if a Baneling comes into position, it is not going to be able to hit the back row of Roaches, putting in a little bit of distance. On top of that, as long as two of the three Roaches attack the same target, then the Banelings will take some damage there. So what's going to be happening here? That is a large number of Banelings, 10 Banelings about to do this bust. There you go. And now busting through a couple of those um, Roaches there, but that was not a good trade at all. But the Zergling is now able to come back in as well. A Queen and now coming in from behind. Mondragon losing one of those Overlords there, but the Zerglings both sides trying to fight back and Paranoid doing a good job getting some damage in there. Stalkers are now on the low ground. They need to engage. Why are they not engaging? They're now going to try to engage, trying to get in position. The Stalkers now making their way in and he force fields his own army and he's unable to get up to that high ground. That is a complete misplay. Axav most likely wanted to try to force field to prevent the Zerglings from coming in, but that was completely mistimed. However, there are now Zealots and Sentries from the back over here. One force field and now trying to come in another force field, preventing many of those Zerglings from finding their target. That Zealot able to fend off a lot of units and now, wow, M M Mondragon and Paranoid going to lose a lot of Zerglings in that battle there. And the loss is now very high, but Strife Crow has lost a lot of his drones as well, and many of his roaches as the Zerglings are now trying to swarm in and getting some damage as well. Probes coming off the mineral line, and now we're um, being forced to mine back over here as the Zerglings were able to do a complete run by on Axlab. Axlab in trouble, going to lose his Nexus in just a matter of seconds. Down it goes. I do not think he has another probe left. Does he? No, he has one probe, but where is that probe? I do not see it. Um... It's going to be take me some quite some time to find it, but um, still, that is going to be a problem as there's only one probe left to try to rebuild the rest of this army. Um, Axav's army is very, very large. It's sitting at 1,800 minerals, so he does have a larger army than both of them combined. But the problem is going to be how to deal with the Zerglings. The Zerglings are pretty much stuck inside, though. They are unable to run anywhere else. There is one sentry sitting over here, and it needs to get a force field down. Otherwise, it's going to get surrounded. As both sides continue to fight back and forth, a Zealot now just fighting off Zerglings one at a time. More Zerglings trying to come in once more. Paranoid getting a good job over here as the Zerglings now once again engage. And the rest of Axav's Stalker Sentry Army finishing off the rest of these units here. Unit-wise, we still have that one probe that is hiding out perhaps over here. Yes, Axav being very, very careful to make sure that that one probe stays alive. Axav could very, very easily... Um, Take uh, rebuild his nexus and try to get back into this game. The shields are now being recovered. Axlav does have a um, does have enough pylons, and he can start to train up. But no, Axlav has traded all of his resources into his opponent, and hopefully, we can see a very very strong play by Strife Crow. That one probe still wandering back and forth over there, as the armies Zerglings and Sentries and Stalkers are now trying to make their way forward. And Mondragon most likely going to lose another one of his overlords. So Mondragon already supply locked. Going to be even more supply locked at this time. And now with the front door getting some spine crawlers in order to fend off that attack. Mondragon sitting at 42 over 28. He is in a bit of a trouble. But this army is not going to be able to get there in time at all. There are so many Banelings that these Zerglings are not going to be able to simply slip by. And by the time the slower sentries and zealots engage, the spine crawlers will be done, and there's not much that can be done at all. And Paranoid losing another overlord in that position there, trying to take down another uh, overlord in that position. It looks like the overlord will get shot down, but Mondragon already has enough overlords to not be excuse me, not be supply locked. And now Mondragon was sitting out with five spine crawlers and only a very small window. For the units to be able to push through at all, Mondragon can easily create some more spine crawlers here, complete the wall off, except for a very, very small opening, and all the Zerglings can simply try to funnel through there. You can see once again the Zerglings simply running around and engaging back over here, the Zerglings dancing back and forth, the Queen also coming in to engage, Roach is now coming in, Drones now pulling off the mineral line as well, but I do not think they are engaging in the fight just quite yet. The Roaches are not able to catch up to those Zerglings, especially on the creep, as the Zerglings of Mondragon cleaning up Axlav's base. So this is all going to be down a two base versus a four base race now, but I believe um, Axlav could easily try to help out by um, controlling and microwing units, perhaps getting them into the proper position, as Axlav you know, can still controlling his army of sentries and stalkers army-wise. His army is starting to deplete rather slowly as the sentries and stalkers are going to perhaps get into position once more. And in come the Zerglings again. And the Zerglings now going to get a lot of damage here. We need to get some force fields. There's the force fields, but it may be a day late and a dollar short. As a, oh wait, never mind. As a very, very tight pocket of units sitting right there. 
Um, I never knew that you could actually stack your uh, stalkers and sentries that well, but they are now going to try to engage over here. Going to get cleaned up and finish off one more time as um, apparently Mondragon wants more Banelings to try to take this game. Zerglings now hiding out over here already are going to be able to push in and get some damage onto these Zerglings. One poor Zergling down over here going to get taken down. Who's going to win this battle? And it looks like Strife Crow wins out on that battle with the natural regeneration for the win. And leaving that Zergling alive at one hit point. Back over here, though, we are going to get a Zergling down. So both players, or both teams capturing one Zelnaga Watchtower. The Zergling still looking for perhaps another target still. To try to bust their way through the spine crawlers, getting in a little bit of damage. Long distant tentacle hit as the Zerglings now once again running around the map trying to clean up. And the longer this game goes, the worse and worse it is going to be for um, evil geniuses. The evil geniuses do not have the economy to really catch up in this game. 45 harvesters, so that is a decent amount of drones. But he does not have enough mineral patches to really um, make anything of it. Perhaps Mutalisk should probably be the unit of choice at this point if we are at tier 2. He is taking the tier 2, but it is not going to be there in quite some time. And as a queen simply being left to fend for herself, and that is not a very, very viable option at all as a Zergling is now going to once again run in straight into this base go after another queen no spine crawlers in the midst of that there another queen going to get torn apart and the Zergling is unable to engage back on that part there Stalkers and sentries are in position. The stalkers and sentries should perhaps just um, park themselves in the, in this location, being able to place down force fields at the critical moments. Not quite sure what the long-term goal of Axlav is at this time. Axlav still has one pro, but he has not been given 400 minerals in order to rebuild his base just quite yet. Paranoid uh, apparently asking if they should once again go for the attack. They do have the larger army at this time. 72 food, 1275 with 350 minerals, 400 in terms of Zerglings. We are getting the Zerg level 1 attack upgrades as now Strife Crow trying to go for an infestation pit. Um, that is not the option that I would have liked to have seen as I believe the Mutalist would have been able to deal a lot more damage without taking any damage. Um, especially as you need pathogen glands and now we see the spire coming in from Mondragon so it is going to be infestors as well. Roach is now pushing their way through. There is one Baneling hiding in the midst of that group of units and taking down a couple of Zerglings in that battle there. Roaches and Zerglings both sides battling it out. Force fields preventing many of those sentries from getting surrounded or destroyed at all but the Roach is now coming in to battle it out. Queens are just trying to completely roll this over but Mondragon able to and just saying how easy this game was for him and there's the gg um once again that has to be taken as a private note saying that their strategy was uh, was very very strong and able to take that game it is no by no means a disrespect to eg for lo losing th these two games so mondragon and paranoid um winning this matchup two to zero in this best of three series don't click on the link. The link does not really do anything. It doesn't take you any, anywhere you want to go. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed this um, 2v2 replay between Mondragon and Paranoid and Strife Crow and Axlav.